In this video, I'm going to tell you about five plugins that your WordPress blog must have in order to be successful. Now, all of the plugins that I'm going to talk about in this video are, first of all, are free, and second of all, are able to be installed from within the WordPress dashboard, so they're very easy to install. OK, let's get down to business. Plugin number one is Shareaholic. And Shareaholic allows you to easily share posts and pages on social media. And it's got full support for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, Reddit, LinkedIn, Gmail, Delicious, OneNote, Evernote, StumbleUpon, Dig, Tumblr, Hootsuite, Buffer, Fancy, Wanalo, Yummily, WeHeartIt, Flipboard, Print Friendly, Amazon Wishlist, Instapaper, Pocket, Who's, Inbound.org, VK, and a lot, lot more. Now, the procedure for installing these plugins is all going to be the same. So I'll show you on the first one. Uh, the configuration is going to be different. So on the subsequent plugins, I'll just show you how to configure them because the installation uh, procedure is exactly the same. So log into WordPress, go to the WordPress dashboard and scroll down here to where it says plugins and then click on add new. Click there. And it takes you to this page where you have some of their popular and featured plugins. And come here to the box where it says search plugins and then type in the name of the plugin that you're looking for. In this case, it's Shareaholic. And then enter. And there we go. You've got Shareaholic, share buttons, rated posts, social analytics, and more. Quite why it's listed twice, I don't know. But there we are. And you can see it's got over 100,000 active installs. This is the one we want. So click here on Install Now. And then click here on Activate Plugin. OK, it says Action Required. You've installed Shareaholic for WordPress. We're ready when you are and click here to get started now. So just click on that button. Opens up this window and you have to click here on get started and it says by clicking get started you agree to Shareaholic's terms of service and privacy policy. So we'll click here to get started. And you can register and configure to get the additional features uh, with a free Shareaholic account. I'm actually going to skip this for this procedure here, but what we can do is go through the things here, like where you can put the related and promoted content, where you want to put the share buttons. Usually you have it below the content on both posts and pages. You can edit the settings here and so on. And you can also monetize it uh, which includes promoted content, affiliate links, and so on. And we'll click on Save Changes. And there we go. That's saying the settings are successfully saved. And let me just show you what this does. Let's go to the site. You can see it's added this here under this default first post. And this makes it easy for people to share your site on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and Pinterest, or they can email a link and so on. OK, this is the first plugin that your site needs. Let me tell you about the next one. Plugin number two is GA Google Analytics. And this inserts your Google Analytics tracking code onto all of your theme pages. It uses the latest version of the Google Analytics tracking code. And you can include the GA tracking code in either the header or the footer. And it also includes the option to add your own custom markup. And again, you go through the same procedure as before. And this is the one we want, GA Google Analytics by Jeff Starr. And click the button to install it. 
So that's installed and activated. Now I need to alter the settings and I can do that two ways. I can either click on the link here that says settings or I can come down here to the settings tab and you can see it's added it down here, GA plugin. Let's just click on that. And you can see it's telling you that Universal Analytics is now the standard for Google Analytics. So you'll need to add all the information in. Let's just scroll down. Click here on GA plugin options. And you will then need to enter your Google Analytics ID and you'll find that in your Google Analytics account. It's the number that starts UA and then you can see information there. And what you do is log into your Google Analytics account get this number, copy and paste it into here. You'll want to check this checkbox and all these other checkboxes as well. Personally, I would leave this one unchecked for display advertising. You can, if you wish to give him support, um, enable the one for link attribution or not, it's up to you. And You'll probably want to keep the uh, code location for the the default setting for in the head uh, because you get better results that way. Let's just scroll down a bit more. You can put in some custom code if you want or tracker options. The, if you click here on this link, it explains a bit more about it. You can also enable the Google Analytics in the WP admin area and then click here on save settings and you'll be all set up. Okay, plugin number three is the EU cookie law. Now, even if your website is hosted outside the EU, if it can be accessed from within the EU, you must comply with the EU cookie directive or to put it correctly, the EU Privacy Directive, and more specifically, Article 5, brackets 3, which requires prior informed consent for storage and for access to information stored on a user's terminal equipment. In other words, you must ask users if they agree to most cookies and similar technologies, in other words, web beacons, flash cookies, and so on, before the site starts to use them. And this is the plugin we're going to install, EU Cookie Law. It's the one that's got the picture of the gingerbread man. So click here to install now. Okay, that's installed and activated. Now I just need to alter the settings, which I'm doing from within the settings area here. First thing to do is obviously check the checkbox to activate. The cookie acceptance length, by default, it's a month, but you can change it. Uh, some sites I've noticed like to be very careful and risk averse and have it only last a day. Let's do that. So every one day uh, you'll get the acceptance bar. Only other thing I'm going to change down here is the position. It puts it in the bottom right. Personally, I like to have it up in the top left. So it's the first thing that people see when they come to the site. And you can change the bar message. See, so by continuing to use the site, you agree to the use of cookies and the accept text, etc. And you've got the pop-up box content and the blocked code message. When that's done, click here on save changes. And if we go to the site, we can see it in action. So click here on visit site. And there we go. You can see it's showing the bar. By continuing to use this site, you agree to the use of cookies. I click here to accept it. Plugin number four is contact form seven. Now there are lots of different contact form plugins out there. But I believe that Contact Form 7 is probably the best one around. And Contact Form 7 allows you to manage multiple contact forms, plus you can customize the form and the mail contents flexibly with simple markup. 
The form supports AJAC-powered submitting, capture, Akismet spam filtering, and so on. It's a very simple short code to insert it into your blog, and it enables you to hide your contact email address from spam bots. And this is the one we want, contact form 7. So let's just get that installed. And when it's all set up and activated, you'll find a new icon here in the sidebar, contact, and you'll have the contact forms. It'll automatically set up a contact form called contact form 1. And this is the short code. Let me just uh, copy that. Control and C on my PC. On Mac, I'm sure you know what to do. Let's just take a look at it. Let's just edit it for a moment and just take a look. You can see what the form's going to look like. It's got the name, subject, message, and the send button. You've also got, let me look at here, who it's going to be going to. It'll automatically set it up for the default email address but you can always change this you can change the from and the subject and so on it's got messages this is what happens when a message is sent or fails to send this is what flashes up on the screen and there are some additional settings as well you can add uh, customization code snippets in there and what you can do is you can enter this into either a page if you want to have a contact page or you can enter it into a text widget if you want to have it in the sidebar and appear on every page. I'm going to have a contact page for this demonstration. So pages add new and we'll call this page contact. And then we just have to paste the short code in like that and if I preview it you can see what it looks like Let's scroll down a bit got all that now one thing you might want not to have on your contact page is this shareaholic stuff so let's just go back And if I scroll down here, we can check these checkboxes to hide all that. Because obviously you don't want people to really share your contact form. It just encourages spammers. Okay, let's move on to the next plugin, which is probably the best one of all. Okay, I've saved the best for last, and this is plugin number five, the all-in-one SEO pack. And this optimizes your WordPress blog for SEO or search engine optimization. And it includes things like XML sitemap support, so you can submit your sitemap to Google and Bing and improve your SEO. Support for SEO on custom post types. You can fine-tune page navigational links. There's integration for WordPress e-commerce sites. Is There's support for CMS-style WordPress installations. It automatically optimizes your titles for Google and other search engines. It generates meta tags automatically and much, much more. You know, if you only install one of the plugins that I talk about in this video, then make it this one because it really is something that can turbocharge your blog and really help get it noticed. And this is the one we want, the all-in-one SEO pack by Michael Torbert. And as you can see, at the time I'm making this video, there are over a million active installs. So it is actually a very, very good plugin. OK, let's install it. And when it's installed and activated, you'll see this new listing here in the sidebar. Let me just talk you through the settings here. These are the general settings. And a few things that you need to take note of. Um, first and foremost, you'll want to set your home page settings because this is how your site is going to appear in Google and the other search engines. So you want to 
alter your home page's title and a description. You want to have your home page keywords and you may or may not want to have a static front page. If you're having a blog, you'll probably want to have that disabled. If you're setting up WordPress as a website, you will probably want to have it enabled. Uh, the keyword settings, of course, you're going to want to have that enabled and you're going to want to have the tags for meta keywords and to dynamically generate keywords for posts and page archives. Let me go through here. Most of these things you'll probably want to keep at the default settings. Again, you can format the titles of pages and posts, etc. Now, a couple of other things here. You can integrate verification with Google Webmaster Tools, Bing Webmaster Center and Pinterest. And again, you simply enter your information in these boxes. Um, you've got your Google Plus profile, which you enter in here. Uh, so you can integrate your site with Google Plus. You can also enter your Google Analytics ID in here. Uh, if you're using the plugin that we discussed earlier, the GA Analytics plugin, then personally I would leave this blank because it might cause a bit of a conflict. And also the GA Google Analytics is a bit more detailed. The, the uh, Google Analytics setting that comes with all-in-one SEO is a bit basic in, in my opinion. Um, you have the no index settings. Obviously, you don't want things like your categories or date archives to be indexed in Google and other search engines. So you want to keep those set. You go a bit further down here and you can exclude pages. Let me show you the other one here, the performance. Let's just click on that. Unless you really know what you're doing, it's best to leave this at the default settings. But you can, if you wish, raise the memory limit and the execution time. And it also, if I scroll down a bit here, gives you some information about your system and so on. The last one to look at is the feature manager. And you can activate various features of the plugin. You can generate an XML sitemap. You can activate social media data. Uh, generate a robots txt file that uh, is very helpful for getting things indexed in Google. You can edit your robots.txt file in your .ht access file to fine tune your site. You can block bad bots and you can also optimize the performance as well. This comes uh, activated automatically. Now let's just show you how this works in a post. Let's come here to posts and all posts. And let's just edit the default post that comes with WordPress. Hello world. Let's click on edit. You can see all this information here. This is what it would look like in Google. And you can alter this. You can alter the title. You can alter the description. You can put in the keywords, custom canonical URL, and also, you know, if it's for things like um, your contact page, you can have the no index and the no follow, and no ODP and so on um, activated so that it doesn't get indexed. If I go back, you'll see that it also shows things like the SEO title and the SEO description and the SEO keywords right here. And you can alter them on the fly without having to go in and alter the entire post and, you know, save it again and everything. So there you go. I mean, as I was saying earlier, if you only get one of these plugins that I've talked about in this video, then get this one. You know, it's a bit complicated to set up, but once you've done it, it's worth its weight in gold and it really can help you get a lot more traffic to your blog.